Hi everyone, welcome back to another video by EV Puzzle. That's me, Nigel. I'm here in my Kona Electric, and today I want to talk to you about OBD2 devices, one in particular. I do draw a line at testing products because testing products for the sake of it and then recommending them or not, it's it's not something I really want to do. So the only times I do it is when the product interests me. And this one does. So first of all, OBD2, what is it? It's a socket on the car. Every car has it since, I don't know, 1996, something like that. I'm not going to look uh, into the actual details, but all you need to know is all modern cars have an OBD2 socket. And from that socket, standard information can be sent to the car and be received from the car. And it's for diagnostics. It's for garages to be able to check fault codes on cars to see what's wrong with it, why it might have stopped, why it's not performing very well. But in addition to just fault codes, almost all the information about the car is standardized and it's sent through this port. So with the right inquiry commands into the car, you can get all sorts of information out if you know the commands to send to the car to get that information back out. People are gradually learning what these codes are and then implementing them into apps on phones and then communicating to little devices via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi that plug into the OBD2 port and then you can communicate with the car and get all sorts of information that you can't normally see on the dash displays. So the average normal person, you're probably not going to be interested in any of that because the manufacturer gives you all the information that you're interested in. And you might be the sort of person that doesn't scroll through all the screens and all the menu options anyway. You just get in the car and drive. So this probably isn't for you. But if you are a bit more like me and you like data and you want to know what's going on in the car and you want to understand why it charged faster last time than it did this time and you want to know more about the car such as battery temperature of your high voltage battery in your electric car then this sort of device could be for you. So let's have a very very quick look at the device that I've been sent and what you actually get. And there it is. So we have a screen display. We have a power cable, USB, which is currently mm -hmm. connected to my power socket underneath the um, center console area. You get a uh, bigger lump of um, double-sided Velcro sticky stuff to stick this device somewhere on the car, wherever you feel like putting it. And then the OBD2 device. So yes, it looks like a SCART socket, doesn't it? With all those pins. And it's not very big. This one is called an iCar Pro. Let's see if you can have a look inside. Let's see if we can have a look inside. Yeah, basically inside there are a couple of uh, printed circuit boards that are glued in there. And on those will be the code and the commands to send to the car and a Bluetooth adapter and maybe a Wi-Fi adapter as well. But basically, that plugs into the car, into the OBD2 socket, which I'll show you in a moment. And this, over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, sends information to that device, which is just being powered by the USB cable. And that's it. That's all it is. So let's see what it does and how simple it is to install. First thing is to locate the OBD2 port, and that is down here. So you can actually see it written on here. It's the fuse cover and OBD access panel. So let's see if I can put the camera where you can see. So my hand just goes in this little hole here, and I give it a little pull. And there's the port. That's the OBD2 port. And all sorts of wires in there, so it looks like you shouldn't really be in there doing anything. But actually, when you when you come away and you look at the car now from a normal perspective, you can't even see that that covers off. So sadly, because of that handle here at the bottom, that's actually in line with where the OBD2 port is. So when you plug that device into the socket 
this cover won't go back on. So you've actually, if you want this cover back on, you've got to, let's move my hand, you've got to take some of this off and cut that away, I suppose, to give some access to put this panel back on with the OBD2 device on there. And I guess that's not such a big deal. Um, I wouldn't mind doing that because it's not going to be seen and you plug it in out of the way anyway. But equally, I don't really mind that panel being off. I mean, I'm never going to be reaching down there. It's not in my way. It doesn't look bad. I can't even see it. If you didn't know I'd taken the cover off, you'd just never know. So having this panel off doesn't really matter. And installing the OBD2 device is this simple. And there you go, we have um, we have a power light. That socket is powered on all the time. So despite my car not being on, the ignition is not on, we do have power at that device. So it's drawing power all the time. Now I'm assured that that has an auto cutoff. So when it's not in use, it powers down anyway and just has a minimal standby and it won't degrade the battery at all. But I'll do some testing and find out if it does. So moment of truth. Let's power the car on and see what happens. Press the button twice. Device is powering up. See if we can get um, a bit of zoom on that. There we go. Let's see how many seconds we have to leave it. I believe we don't have to do anything at all. It will automatically connect. And there you go. <clears throat> so now we have data from the car. And we can see more lights flashing on the OBD2 dongle indicating that it is connected. But you know, I really don't know if it's on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I have no idea what's actually working here. It just works. And the device is showing me I have 74% state of charge. The battery temperature for the main battery, the high voltage battery, 13 degrees C. I'm currently charging. It's green at one kilowatt. And the inside temperature of the car, where I'm sat right now, 29 degrees C. Uh, it's pretty hot. I'm sat here in the sun and uh, yeah, I'm sweating away. So that information, if I just pan onto my dash. Yes, I am now charging at the moment. I'm at 74% as the device and the car says. And I'm charging at 1.3 kilowatts according to the car. According to this, I'm charging at 0.9 to 1 kilowatt. So it's a good 300 watts out. But of course... The ignition is on, so the car is being powered, there is some power being drawn. So maybe that difference is the amount of power that the car is using. And I guess the one way to tell... Let's turn the air conditioning on. And turning the fan up does reduce the amount of power that's charging. So I'm, I'm guessing here that the difference between what's on this display and what the car says is what the car's using, which is, is quite a lot. I wouldn't have expected 400 watts for the car just to have the ignition on. 1.1 kilowatts. 1 1.4 kilowatts, so still 300 watts. Not sure what that is. Uh, I will ask the um, manufacturer of this and see what they have to say. So that is the unique selling point of this device. It is that it's that easy to install. You power the device on, you plug an OBD device into the port and they self-connect and it just works. What do we have over here? We have a left-hand button and then have a scroll for different information. So this is the voltage for the high voltage battery. Uh, 14 degrees on the heater sensor, 13 degrees on the battery, and I'm charging at 1.2 kilowatts. Just double check, 1.5 kilowatts. Press it again. This is the 12 volt battery, it's at 89% state of charge, 14.6 volts. So we're doing okay there, it's quite healthy. That's a useful piece of information to check, especially while I'm testing. 
OBD2 devices to see whether it does degrade the 12 volt battery. So I'll come back and check this information later. Cumulative information about um, how many kilowatt hours I have charged the Kona with in its lifetime. Very interesting. So that's 4,000 kilowatt hours, 16,000 miles. So just over four kilowatt hours, or sorry, four miles per kilowatt hour. That looks like a trip meter for the same information. So you can measure how many kilowatt hours you're using on a single journey. And here we have maximum power and regen information. So sometimes when it's cold, the car actually limits the amount of power you can use and limits the amount of regen that you can use. So those maximum figures are shown here. State of health, yeah, if you're coming to sell the car or if you just want to know the state of health of your battery, there's the number. It's not available on the car as standard. So there's no way of telling whether your battery is degrading or not unless you have one of these devices and the total amount of hours that the car has been operating with the ignition on. With this state of health number for Kia and Hyundai cars, do you know, I'm not sure how realistic this is. That's just a number, and it's a number that the car stalls and can tell you. But is it 100%? Because is it 100% of 64 kilowatt hours are available to you? Or is it 100% of the 67 or 68 kilowatt hours that are in the battery completely? We, we don't know. We are just being told that the state of health is 100%. I've never seen a Hyundai car with less than 100%. Maybe they're really good batteries. Maybe they don't degrade. And back round to the battery information again. 74% state of charge. Charging at 1.3, 1.4 kilowatts. And inside temperature is still very hot. It's 29 degrees. So presuming that you want this extra data... You now have two choices. I hadn't seen a fixed installation, easy installation like this before. All the devices I've seen before are the same sort of dongles that plug into the OBD port, but they communicate to the mobile phone and then an app that you buy for three, four, five pounds, that sort of thing. And Talk Pro is one of them. And that's how I expected to see this information. So it's nice to have an alternative that you can now buy a fixed standard device that doesn't take any configuration, no apps, you don't have to use your phone. It can be left in your car all the time, and it's quite small, quite easy to read, and uh, not complicated. But there's, there's the thing that's on my mind. This device is clearly aimed at delivering something different that the app doesn't give you, and that is the simplicity of connection and the simplicity of operation. It's just all there, all works, all connects together, and you don't have to do anything. With the apps, yeah, you have to download some data, you have to find files in directories on your phone, install them in the right place, update the app, and then configure the app to display the information. So there's a lot more legwork to be done. Now, as an example, I went and did that all myself the other day with Talk Pro. So I installed Talk Pro, the app on my mobile phone, and I spent about two hours getting it configured, just under two hours. And I consider myself a reasonably um, capable person with IT systems. I'm not a mobile phone expert, but I am an ex-programmer. I'm an ex-manager of IT systems. I understand data, I understand technology, and I can learn very quickly. So for me, a couple of hours. Someone with less ability and less experience, maybe more. Maybe you'd need some help. And that's where this little device comes in handy, because there is no configuration. It's very, very simple, very, very easy, and you get to see the information on your car. But if you want to see this information in the first place, then you're probably a bit of a data geeky nerd like myself anyway. In which case you probably don't mind fiddling around on the phone for the files and stuff. So there's a little bit of a flaw with the device that, yes, its unique selling point is that it's very easy to use, very easy to configure. And um, anyone could, could do this. I could honestly say with a few very simple instructions following this video, anyone should be able to do this. It's not difficult whatsoever. Whereas I couldn't say the same for installing Talk Pro. There's no way Susan could follow any instructions and get Talk Pro working on her mobile phone. She just wouldn't be able to do that. But this, she really could. But the thing is, would she want to? Would she want this extra information? And I don't think she would because she doesn't even look at the trip information on the car. She doesn't use half the features on the car. So if you just want to get in and drive the car and you don't care about the extra data, you're not going to want one of these anyway. And if you do want one, you're a bit of a geeky nerd like me, maybe, so you don't mind doing some extra configuration. So it's all about, perhaps, how it's presented. And 
I like this. It's nice and neat. It's nice and easy. It does show you what you want to see. And the dongle seems to work. Um, I'm told that it won't drain the battery. It will turn off on its own when I'm not using it. So uh, I, I think it's a good little thing. Is it better than an app though? Does it give you more or less information? Well, from what I've seen so far, there's a lot more information available on TalkPro and other apps like that than there is on this little device. So in summary, at least we have a choice between using an app on a phone to connect to an OBD2 OBD device to get extra data from the car. And we now have a fixed device that's really easy to connect. No hassles whatsoever, anyone can do it. Anyone can access this information. It's not that expensive. I'll put the details, including the price, in the description of the video. But I think this device in UK pounds is, is under £50. And that's not bad to gain this extra information. So would I recommend this device over um, an app? Well, at the moment, right now, I don't know because I haven't tried all the apps. For me to make that decision and to recommend it to you, I'd have to know how easy all the other apps are to install and whether they're any good. And at the moment, I don't. What I do know is I've avoided getting those apps and using them because they are more complicated. So I guess that in itself says that um, I am swayed more towards this device because of how easy it is, even though it gives less information. So only a quick first review. Um, I will continue to use this for a little while longer. I'll do some tests and see whether the battery degrades at all from leaving the OBD2 device plugged in because that's my plan. I'm going to leave it plugged in all the time. I'm going to leave the cover off. Uh, I'm not fussed about that and see how we get on. Anyway, I'll do some more testing and I will give you the information at a later date. But until then, thanks for watching. I hope that was useful. I hope that was enjoyable. If you're interested in OBD2 data and uh, you've got some thoughts about this device or apps, leave the comments below in the video. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye bye for now. Something I forgot to mention in the video was this is an ideal location for installing the device in the center console next to the USB socket. And if you can be really smart, use the wireless charging pad to have a charger that powers the device directly. Then you have no cables hanging around anywhere. Really smart installation.